The uh, Extension Service has a long history of providing educational programs, and many of those have to do with sustainability. Uh, we do research and demonstration pro programs with farmers to help them learn best management practices on how to grow crops for the least amount of money, the least amount of inputs. Uh, several years ago, we helped uh, many of our farmers go to no-till, which meant less trips over the, over the field, which meant less diesel that they had to buy, saved them time. Uh, with our yards, we have the Kansas Green Yards program that started in this county and now has been accepted statewide where people look at their, their yards and they have a little check sheet on what are they doing. Do they soil test and apply the appropriate amount of, of chemicals? Do they have best management practices if they have insects or diseases in their lawn or their garden? What are things they could do to save the water that, that hits their place and keeps it on their, on their, on their yard or their garden? using rain barrels and that type of thing. We had an audit done on our, our building here, a, a pre-audit, and then we did some work, especially sealing the ductwork, and then putting in 10 inches of insulation, bringing it up to about an R40 in this building. It made a huge difference in January and February. We had some comparative bills to last year to a building right next to us, so we knew their energy last year and this year, and our energy last year and this year, and in those two months, just our natural gas savings was about 55%. Some Eileen Horn came in, our sustainability coordinator for the county and city, came in, we talked about what are some things we could do around here that would uh, create energy, save us money, which is taxpayer money, and be an educational program that we could share with, with our citizens. And the thing that really stood out most would be that the solar was an option. So we uh, did a request for a proposal, uh, received, I think there were five different uh, bids or, or requests for proposals, and we were able to work with Cromwell. Uh, they ended up being the, the, the one that our board selected to work with. And so they came out here and in three days had the, the panels installed. And in January, we were able to turn it on and started making electricity. A lot of people are still wondering how this solar technology works. Uh, it's been around for uh, 50, 60 years in regular practice and, and its origins go back way further than that. Its, uh, its beauty is in its simplicity, really. There's no moving parts and, um, you know, as an engineer, I realize that, you know, when, when we have in moving parts, they, they tend to wear out. That's, what's, that's what goes wrong with things. And uh, you know, the only thing that's moving in, in, the, in the solar is, is electrons, and that's just electricity, and we know well that the wires in our home do not wear out. What happens with solar is sunlight hits the panel and excites electrons on the top layer. They want to go from the negatively charged to the positively charged back side of the panel, but they can't make a direct route because of the way the panel is manufactured with a, um, a non-conductive uh, middle part of that sandwich. So what the electricity ends up having to do is run through a circuit Complete, the completion of that circuit is the flow of electricity. That's the generation of electricity. Uh, that, that's how it's made possible. Now, that electricity that's generated on the roof is the type of electricity we call DC power, or direct current. And uh, we don't use that sort of power in our homes. Um, we use AC power. So we have a device that uh, converts the, the DC to AC power. And that's called the inverter, and it's, uh, it serves a couple of purposes. One in that is that conversion, the other is in the synchronization of the power that's produced on the roof with the grid. Whenever we have usable sun, whenever we, that creates usable electricity on the building, that power is used first. Anything else that the building needs at all is, is used or pulled from the grid to the building. Any excess that's produced on the roof that the building doesn't need, it's pushed back onto the grid. So essentially, you're using the grid as a giant battery bank. In, in both the city and the county, we have a climate action plan and a sustainability plan. And within those goals are our goals to help us reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. So our projects have been focused um, primarily on energy efficiency and renewable energy as the you know, fastest, most cost-effective ways to, to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. 
Um, what I love about this project in particular is that the staff at the Extension office really thought hard about a strategy and what they did is they did energy efficiency first. So they did insulation projects, they did lighting retrofits, they did projects to make their building as efficient as possible so that they could size their, their solar um, photovoltaic panels appropriately. Um, so it's a great, I think, example of that other buildings, you know, both municipal buildings and commercial buildings could follow, which is reduce your energy use as much as you can and then offset um, where you can with, you know, affordable free energy from the sun. Renewable energy really is the future. There's, there's no doubt uh, that, that not only here, but uh, in Germany, if they're doing away with their nuclear power plants and going to renewable energy, it's, it's certainly uh, something that the world is looking at. And, um, and I'm very pleased that we're, we're jumping on the bandwagon real early uh, and using it as not, not only an educational component, but also as cost savings for the taxpayers. The reason we're interested in renewable energy is that, it, in my opinion, the sun is free energy. And if we can capture that sun, why spend money to make it? Every year, people are spending more and more of their money uh, on energy. So more and more of a fraction of what they're, what they're earning, what they have to work with in their business or in their home or, or in their government um, you know, budget is being spent on energy. The nice thing about solar is that allows us uh, to essentially lock in the cost of our energy up front. And, and that's a very helpful thing uh, for, for any institution to do in these tight times. Of course, our extension service is a tax-supported entity uh, from the county as well as Kansas State University, in this case in, in Kansas. It's a cooperative effort. And so every single citizen out here that pays taxes, uh, this, because we're saving electricity, we're built, making our own, we're saving the energy from the insulation, that's, that's money we're going to be saving our taxpayers the next, however long this building's here. The, you know, the energy, the solar panels, probably 30, 40 years the insulation until the building collapses. And so we are saving the taxpayer in this, this county money from today forward.